Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to talk about function mapping. Uh, give you an idea of what it is, uh, what you might want to think about uh, with respect to changing the function assignments on your throttles so that you know what you're going to get each time that you press the button on a throttle. So, let's go ahead and uh, get started with uh, a look at function mapping, why you might want to do it, and how you might want to do it. Okay, so what is function uh, mapping and why might you want to go about trying it? Well, with every decoder, every time you hit one of the function buttons on your throttle, you'll get a specific sound or uh, light feature or some other function that will operate in your locomotive. The problem is that manufacturers typically will use different um, function buttons for various sounds and lighting features. The only consistent uh, function assignments that I know that most uh, or all manufacturers use, in North America at least, is F0 for the forward and reverse headlights, uh, F1 for the bell, F2 for the horn or the whistle, and F8, which is your basically your mute or on-off uh, button for the sound. So everything other than that it's pretty much manufacturer dependent. And this is one of the biggest complaints I hear from people is, why can't the manufacturers get together and use the same function assignments for the same uh, sounds or, or features? Well, it, it just hasn't happened, and I don't particularly think it's going to happen uh, anytime soon anyway. Uh, what you have to do, though, is plan for that. Um, there's another thing that you have to be aware of. There are some functions on different decoders that operate differently. For example, braking. Uh, on a wow sound decoder, you hit F7 uh, multiple times to get the brakes to activate, and you can, the more times you hit that F7 button, the more braking effect you'll get. And then to release the brake, you hit F6. Uh, on a soundtracks decoder, though, it's F11. And with that, it's just an on-off feature. You hit F11 to activate braking, and you hit F11 again to turn the brakes off. So they operate two different ways, two different sets of features, and it's very difficult to match those in a consist, because if you hit F11 to hit the brakes, the uh, wow sound decoders will not respond, and vice versa. So that's one of the reasons that I say it's a lot easier in the long run to plan ahead and uh, plan your consist so that you're using the same types of decoders in those consists. So then, why would you want to go about remapping, uh, and, and how would you do it? Well, first of all, in any operating session or operating setting, when you're trying to uh, hit a specific button for a specific feature, if they're different for various locomotives uh, in your fleet, then your operators are going to be confused a lot of the, you're going to be confused a lot of the time. So it just pays in the long run to sit down, make up a list, a table of all the functions and what their assignments are on each type of decoder that you use. And then go through those and come up with a minimal set of functions that you want to all be on the same function button. Okay, so you might decide that you want function three to be the short horn, you want function four to be the dynamic brakes, you want function five to be something else, etc. And that way, you can at least have a minimal set of functions that everybody knows how to use. And that's the way I go about it. I just sit down with the table and, and come up with that minimal set. One other feature to think about is some throttles don't have as many uh, function buttons as others. And you might need to streamline that set of functions to say six or eight or something of that nature so that uh, you have at least a minimal set that everybody can access easily on, on their throttles. Um, at this point though, I want to go ahead and show you then, after you've made up your list of functions and function key assignments or function buttons, uh, how do you go about programming that in to a decoder? And 
For this example, I'm going to use Decoder Pro simply because it graphically shows you, you know, on the computer screen how to go about doing it. And it's very simple and easy with, with this approach. And I'll show you, it only takes a few minutes to do it. Uh, and then later on in the week, I will show you how you can use Decoder Pro without a computer interface to at least come up with the function CV settings that you need to program into your decoder in order to be able to uh, manually uh, remap your function settings. So stick around. I'm going to go ahead and, and crank up the uh, computer and we'll get started with that part. Okay, so this is the basic uh, Decoder Pro uh, decoder window for a specific locomotive. I've created a, uh, a test uh, uh, locomotive here and I've selected a Tsunami 2 diesel uh, locomotive uh, for the uh, uh, decoder functions. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, function mapping using Decoder Pro. So first of all, with, uh, with the Economy and Tsunami uh, decoders, there's two types of function maps. Up here you can see one called a legacy function map. And what the legacy function map is, it is what, what I call the old style of mapping functions. And it's what you will see for a lot of, of other decoders. It gives you this basically a checklist uh, lined up against the uh, different types of functions. So for the forward headlight, uh, typically you would click on white. Okay, that's your white wire. And that goes to the headlight. Uh, you could also, you could set it up to um, activate the air horn. Or you could set it up for the light and the air horn to come on at the same time when you hit F0. Uh, you don't want to do that, of course, I don't think. But all of these, these are the different uh, features uh, that are available. And these are the different function buttons that you can assign them to. So you just go through here with your list of functions that you want to assign to a given button. And you click on the ones that you want to assign them to. So I'm going to go down through here real quick. There's the air horn the bell, uh, you might put the dynamic brakes on F4, I think is common. So that's the way you would go about doing this. You would put the short horn maybe on F3. Uh, so there's a lot of these different features that you can uh, set up using this. However, I don't use this anymore. I don't think it's quite as user-friendly uh, and as easy to grasp as the um, new function method that they have. So let me show you that. But first, let me point out, if you make any changes on this particular function um, control setup, it overrides all the function settings that you might use on the, the new uh, function mapping appro approach. So it says right here, use of this pane is not recommended, and I don't recommend it. It's just provided there for backward compatibility for people who are used to this type of function mapping. So let's look at the new approach. Okay, So what we have here is the Tsunami 2 and Economy extended function maps. It uh, covers all uh, 29 functions from 0 through 28 and allows you to assign features to each of those. You'll also note here on the right hand side, it has a number of different features that you can set up for automatic sounds. So if you want to use automatic sound effects uh, when moving in a forward direction or a rear, in a backward direction, this is where you would go about setting those features up. But you also have to activate some of those, say, in the automatic sound uh, control uh, map as well. So you would activate, say, your automatic brake squeal to be able to control your, your automatic brakes and your automatic bell, those kind of things. That's what they relate to. Uh, as far as mapping, though, all you have to do is find the specific function feature that you want to remap. You can then, right next to it, click on the little drop-down box, and you can select any one of these 29 uh, function assignments uh, that you want to use uh, when you're, you know, running your locomotives. Now, you want to stick with the head headlight at F0, backup light at F0. Um, some of these other features, F3 and F4 here, are way out on F24 and 25. But things like the mute, you know, it's right there on F8, which is the standard, basically, 
for North American uh, operations. So you go down through here, this is F11 as I showed you. So there are a lot of different things that you can work with here. And as I said, I find this a lot more user-friendly and a lot easier to use. All you have to do is make up your table of functions and features and which button you want to assign them to. And then just go down through here, find the, each one that you want to make a change, click on it, select which button you want to assign it to. I could put that at F28. I could, you know, any of these things I can move around. I might want to move that down to F3. So there's a lot you can do as far as mapping and matching specific features and functions to the function buttons on your throttles. Well, I hope that gives you a better feeling for how you can go about resetting the functions on your decoders uh, in your model railroad fleet so that everybody uh, at an operating session at least can, you know, do a little bit more than turn on the lights, blow the whistle uh, or the horn and activate the bell and then hopefully know how to turn it on and off. So think about that. And later on in the week, as I said, I'll have another video showing how you can use Decoder Pro to make the changes uh, using manual programming if you don't want to set up a computer interface uh, for your model railroad. So until Thursday, take it easy.